Well, Odell Beckham Jr. has made his decision. We'll talk about it on the show today. We've got matchups. We've got the Wheel of Shame. Two of us are spinning it, and I'm one of them. So you make sure to tune in, subscribe, enjoy the show. <laughs> As fall transitions to winter, there's nothing better than cozying up with a comforting home-cooked meal, especially when HelloFresh makes it so easy. Get up to 14 free meals plus Three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. We want to thank Harry's for supporting the show. I have used Harry's products for a millennium. That's how long. Whoa. That's a long time. It's a time. long time. Well before when they were a sponsor. And um, it's just kind of part of the routine now. In fact, I, I laughed the other day because I shared with these guys my – my father sent me like I get <laughs> yes. I get a lot of Harry's right you know what I mean and I so I gave him a gift set and I get this text and I feel like he was paid by Harry's to text me because it's like I love this product I've used these other razors my whole life <laughs> this is way better shave I'm using this forever I even like their shave gel like it was a testimonial from my father is he on the payroll I don't know but um he if, loves Harry's if you don't know Harry's it's time that you do know Harry's created to be different from other shaving companies, high quality, long lasting blades, durable weighted handles. Uh, I don't need to say anything else. It's a great product and I've used it forever. There's never been a better time to try Harry's go to harrys.com slash footballers to get their starter set for just three bucks. That's, that's not a lot of money. It's a hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed. So you got nothing to lose. Go to harrys.com slash footballers right now to get this special offer. That's H A R R Y S.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, November 12th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, back with you. We have news to talk about, injury updates. We have a couple of big free agent acquisitions. We have matchups. We have the wheel of shame. We have hopefully a very limited reaction to last night's affair. Oh, man, I've got some reactions. Do we, did you say, I mean, this is the question. Did you, what, did you stay awake? So not only did I stay awake, uh, so, I'm sorry. So last night, uh, my children had the big debut. Like they're they're doing a, a theater show, and all of them are in it. So I went full dad mode. I silenced the phone. I didn't look at it from you know like five o'clock on. I hit record on the game. I'm very Lamar Jackson's my quarterback in my fantasy football league. So I'm like. I'm, I have a little bit of excitement for this game. You know, get the game, get the week off to a good start against the Miami Dolphins, of course. Mm -hmm. So I go to the show. I come back. I have no idea what has happened in this game, and it's already very late. I fire it up, and holy crap, was that – not only was that a bad football game, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Unbearably frustrating to watch Lamar Jackson and the Ravens get absolutely shut down by the exact same play over and over. And how can you not figure out how to beat this defense? What is happening here? Next Gen Stats said that their safety is not only blitzed more than usual, they blitzed more than any safeties have blitzed in the history of the Next Gen Stats era. They just kept doing that in it. And Lamar Jackson did not figure it out. Like the, the game plan, even to, to start the game, the game plan of this, what was all this check down garbage? Like these, like the short outs. What are we doing here? Baltimore stretched the field, do something, and then they kept giving the ball over and over to, to Devonta Freeman. And it was, I was very tilted last night, having waited anxiously and stayed up. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't finish the football game. It was basically like I lived on the East Coast because mm. I didn't finish this game till about midnight. 
and I cried myself to sleep. You now have consecutive games with the Jaguars Bills game and then this one where as a as a fan you you expect the second half to something to change you expect yep. the fourth quarter something to change the and last like, drive ugh. something to change it, it's gonna happen right I mean and that game could be so costly for them in the in the playoff race and yes. the division so yeah not a great I mean he's he, he ended up okay for fantasy it, because of the the Dak Prescott style last couple of drives he almost completely bailed himself out but then of course took a, a minus two uh did you so on the uh on the Mark Andrews play that where he caught it with his legs and it somehow got overturned on replay mm -hmm. did, was that ever no. explained there was I never didn't, there was I didn't never see video of the ball hitting the ground no there, there was never a frame a still frame or a video that was ever shown to the public how did they overturn I saw that? I saw a frame did you? you saw a frame where the ball hit the ground what yeah I saw a frame that brought it into question but I didn't think they'd overturn it because it was called to catch on the field that was but there was a frame so where weird. he he seemed to have the ball and then he may have been jostling it while part of it touched the ground, but I didn't really think that the ground affected it. I mean, most people were upset about that play. Um, because it looked like a catch. Yeah, it did, but be upset with the Ravens in, oh, in I, general. Oh, and hopefully... I am. Hopefully you you did uh, the obvious thing. Hopefully you started your Dolphins, <laughs> st started Albert Wilson, um, and really took advantage of... Well, uh, not, not Mike Goosey. Oh, Goosey's back. Mm. Can you hit me with the goose, man? <laughs> I mean... Hit me with it. He saw the – he led the team in targets, right? He led the team in – he had seven targets. Oh, that game was the worst. <laughs> that was the worst. Well, we'll try to redeem it a little bit with uh, today's episode. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And uh, there, is, there is an official – there is a poll result to a question we asked on the show. Yes. That I will not be abiding by. Mm, you're dumb. <laughs> Uh, because I am my own person, and 17,000 <laughs> votes will not deter me. However, we did ask people's preference on spelling the muth is luth, L-U-T-H or L-O-O-T-H. And it was emphatically yep, it was. won by the L-U. Emphatically? L -U yeah. 56% yeah, versus, That's a big win. That's versus 43 is emphatically? It's a clear victory. Um, for the L U T H Luth. Now, here's the deal: if you're writing, someone got Luth. By all means, by all means, L O O O O O T H. I don't care. But if it's the Muth, the Muth is Luth. It's M U T H L U T H. Yep. It's uh, official. It's fine. That'll be on our shirt. I will abide. Yeah. Well, you have to design it. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's easy. Join the foot dot com for our fantasy football community. It is Friday. <laughs> Foot Clan Friday. Today we're giving away another item from pristineauction.com. A Stefan Diggs signed mini helmet. Congratulations <laughs> to... Well, the, the great thing is, is we give this away to somebody that supports us at jointhefoot.com. Mm -hmm. And here's you, proof it's random. And yes, you... you and, a, and proof that it's someone who supports our show. That's fair. <laughs> Now we always pick your username because you're not it's not your regular name on right. there. You all have a username and an avatar. And today's winner is Mr. Cooper, the ultimate pooper. Congratulations. You win a Stefan Diggs signed mini helmet. You can go to pristineauction.com, use the code ballers, get a ten dollar credit to get some sweet swag. We talked about Thursday night. I don't want to talk about it anymore, and you can't make me. But if I was going to, I might mention six for eighty for Rashad Bateman. It, who like, continues to look outstanding on every yes. play that he he makes? He, he looked outstanding. Now, I, you know it was it was light, it was groggy. It felt like the most of his production kind of came there at the end of the all, game. All of it came okay. at the end. It, well, that would make sense because Lamar had a hundred yards in well, the I, first I, three quarters. Just saying, where it's like Tar every target wise as well it was weird. The whole first half of the game, he was hyper targeting Hollywood, missing him on most of those. I think Hollywood, what did he have? Uh, 13 targets. Yeah, 13 targets. Um, they were not in sync. And then at the no. very end of the game, um, it it was all Bateman on those uh, those last two drives. And he was successful with it. Bateman yeah. has looked really – he's passed he's the good. eyeball test for sure. But up until those last two drives, I was like, man, Bateman, I think he had like one catch or something. It was, it was just he was completely gone, and I was happy to see him show up at the end of that game. There uh – 
It would have been better for the Ravens had Sammy Watkins not returned. Well, That's yeah. That's how bad he was. <laughs> All he did was hurt them. One catch, and then he fumbled it, and then that changed the game as well. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Odell Beckham Jr. finalized a one-year deal with the Los Angeles Rams. He will join them for practice today. He hopes to make his debut on Monday against San Francisco. This move is bewildering on some levels. Uh, Deshaun Jackson just left this team because he couldn't get targeted. Robert Woods has spent time complaining about his targets. The team has apparently said they're all in with Odell and Sean McVay spoke to him and got him excited about his role. It ju I, it's hard not to look at that and say, this might not be as good as they think it's going to be. Because if you have promised Odell, who is loud when he doesn't get his targets, that he's going to get them, then you're going to be back in the Baker world of, I have to give them to him. And that doesn't necessarily make your team better. You had to win him over. He was deciding between multiple places. So th there obviously was money uh, given, uh, $4.5 million. Um, as well as, you know, hey, here's why to come here. Now, I, I would say this, the Deshaun Jackson not being able to get enough targets, that's because he couldn't beat out Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson's been on the field 90% of the time, and he's gone. I mean, oh, I would assume Odell Beckham will overtake that with the money and the, the wooing, but I agree with you, Andy. I don't think this is necessarily all roses for the Rams. And for fantasy, it's bad for just about everyone. Bad for Odell Beckham compared to other places he could have gone and been the dude. Uh, bad for Robert Woods and Cooper Cup in the sense that now they're... Bad for Higby. Yeah, uh, it's just one of those things. That, very disappointing for fantasy. Maybe um, good for Stafford. Yes, good for Stafford. And could, could obviously be good for the Rams, but I don't look at this as um, a real game changer where now this bad offense is going to be great. They were already great. They were great without him. They'll be great with him. I don't know that they'll be that much better. Cam Newton signed a one-year deal with the Panthers. We're back. We're back, baby. And not only did he sign a one-year deal, he, they paid him a ton of money. I mean, they, yeah. they it could be worth up to $10 million. The $10 million is if he takes him to the Super Bowl. Uh, normal built-in incentives that they expect him to hit will be $6 million. Still a lot for it's, the rest of the season. It's starter money. The, it's starter money to the tune of n n he's the starter over Darnold. I, I don't see Darnold coming back and, and being the starter the you know four or five weeks from now, unless Cam goes out there and completely collapses. Now, this week, it'll be P.J. Walker as the starter. Cam might be suited up, <laughs> Cam, and they might be like, okay, let's uh, – Let's just go have Cam run the ball if uh, Walker's not doing anything, but he's not going to be the starter this week. Alvin Kamara remains sidelined at Thursday's practice. I've heard conflicting reports, uh, but most of them pessimistic about his availability for this week. Is that what you guys are hearing? That's what I'm hearing yeah. as well. I would be planning to be without him. Chris Godwin looks like a game-time decision for head coach Bruce Arians and the Buccaneers. Will practice Friday, uh, or at least that's what Bruce Arians is hoping for. Brooks, I'm guessing we'll have some information on that by the end of the show based on the fact that they're in Tampa. So let me know if you hear. Um, it, you know, they could be without Godwin, Antonio Brown, Scotty Miller, Rob Gronkowski. Uh, I have pivoted back to Josh Allen in my Allen Brady decision making here. So. You know, you want all the weapons available for the highest ceiling, but Brady should be able to get enough done against a bad Washington secondary. Mm -hmm. I agree. But you're going to have to go to the wire with Chris Godwin, and you better have a pivot option ready. James Robinson returned to a limited practice on Thursday, running back for the Jags. Julio added to the injury report again. Yeah, and I it, mean, the way it was reported, there was a video um, of him running a route in the open part of practice for the media, and – by, he doesn't catch the ball. He visibly looks like, oh, I tweaked something because he's, like, upset. And then they didn't see Julio for the remainder of the time yeah, in practice. He, he won't be there this week. And at this point, I, I tell me if I'm being too overreactive, but I feel like you can cut Julio and move on because when you keep re-aggravating the same injury, 
you either need a ton of time to heal, in which case you're not playing football, or when you're out there, yes. you're untrustworthy uh, from a physical standpoint, and you could start him. I Julio was my start of the week this week. I loved – he looked good last week. He came out of the game uninjured, ready to go. Here's Julio Jones. Let's go. And he re-aggravated it again at his age. I just feel like you cannot – put your trust so obviously not my not my start of the week anymore and I was sad because he was in my DFS lineup as well I believe this is the game that I picked the upset and it's feeling even stronger now like you're gonna have to move this entire offense with Adrian Peterson and AJ Brown yep I mean they may find a way maybe they make two defensive touchdowns again and, but like we didn't really see the offense have a lot of success in the last game we saw the defense give them a short field a pick six and then they just wasted the clock and held on. So it's going to be a very trying week for them, and we'll see if Tannehill can figure it out with the other options. Kyler didn't practice. Hopkins didn't practice. Rondell Moore didn't practice with a concussion. Oh, was, yeah, okay. That's but A.J. Good. Green returned to practice. You know, Kyler early in the week, a lot of optimism. I don't think he's going to play in this game. I don't think that the, the cost-benefit for the Cardinals is there. They are at home, P.J. Walker, Colt. McCoy got it done. I heard some interviews this morning. You know, it was very maybe, maybe not that he'll be back out there. I think you're going to have Colt McCoy, AJ Green, Christian Kirk, James Connor. But we'll we'll let you know. I mean, yeah. If if Kyler's active, you're just putting him back in, right? I would, yes. Clyde Edwards-Alaire looked good. Sorry, let me let me rephrase. Quote looked great at oh. practice on Wednesday. And that was from the, the OC, so maybe Edwards Lair is back this week. I would imagine he is, yeah. Zach Moss participated on Thursday in a non-contact jersey. That means he should. Uh, he could. It, it means he, he could. should Clear be. What I was going to say, he should be in pads and has to get through a contact practice first before he can be cleared. Gotcha. So you got to do you got to do one non-contact and one contact. Um, Speaking of concussions, Ramondre Stevenson expected to practice today. This was kind of the, the final straw for him being available in this game. So practicing today means that there is a chance Ramondre gets out there. It also means that Damian Harris probably won't. Yeah, hopefully you still have your flow chart uh, so you can make your Patriots running back decision. It's really hard because I don't know if the flow chart – it gets a little blurry for me. I, I thought the flow chart said if Damian's out, you just play Ramondre. Mm -hmm. but I'm not sure that, that that's the better decision than Brandon Bolden, who had 10 touches last week in a game where they both played. And because there's been a game where we thought Ramondre would be out there and then he's inactive and the practice and the trust. And like, are you confident a hundred percent that Ramondre is a better play than Bolden? The, the flow uh, chart is, is in pencil. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I'm in not a very smudgy pencil. I'm certainly not confident that Ramondre Stevenson is the better play uh, than Bolden because I'm not confident that if he clears concussion protocol, he'll be active. Bill Belichick does what he wants. But even if he's active. I am confident that Ramondre Stevenson is the better player than uh, Bolden. I am very confident that if both Ramondre Stevenson and Bolden get 15 touches, if, if either one got them, Ramondre Stevenson would be the better fantasy option. He's looked outstanding um, on his touches. It's just a matter of whether he'll get the work, and that's where my confidence wanes. Uh, you also have Donovan Peoples-Jones not practicing, non-injury related, though. Okay. T.Y. Hilton logged a full practice. He will be back. I mean, T.Y. Right. is going to be back out on the field, and Jermichael Hasty did not practice My on Thursday. Jeff. So Jeff Wilson could get an opportunity in this game, and we'll get an opportunity to see if he's got, if he looks recovered and has the same juice that he's had in previous years. If you want to tune into the Injury Blitz podcast with all the Friday practice reports and our injury expert, Matthew Betts, you can check that out at jointhefoot.com. We also give you the game day alerts over there, and uh, Mike will be live on Sunday morning letting you know uh, what to tilt about, what decisions to make, what the rest of the flow chart looks like for the Patriots backfield. I feel like the Patriots backfield flow chart is a flow chart that doesn't have the final level. Like it gets you like two levels in, and then you're like, wait, what's the next step? And then it just says, it's up to you. Yeah, it is, it's it's – Fully the the uh, the meme of Charlie from It's Always Sunny, where he's looking mm -hmm. like he's been up all night and he's crazed, and he's got the uh, uh, he's like he's trying to find a serial killer with the wires going everywhere. That's how you decide who to play for the Patriots. That was today's news notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper. Grab the app, subscribe to the Breaking Alerts channel. They are the leader in breaking news alerts. 
Before we move into the forecast, we've got seven matchups. We've got the Wheel of Shame coming up as well. We do want to thank today's sponsors. And we're going to start by thanking, listen to this. We're thanking Liquid Death. Liquid Death. And it's funny because this is a new water brand that is out there. <laughs> and I, I actually discovered them at a 4th of July party when I watched Al Borland walking around with a tall boy looking can of liquid death. And I'm like, oh, what's that new beer you got? And he's like, this is sparkling water. And I was like, <laughs> that is the coolest can of sparkling water I have ever seen. And you could find them in stores. Maybe you've noticed these strange tall boys and said, oh, these are beers. And they're not. They're bottled water. and um, Canned water. Uh, that's right. Sorry. In the bottled water section, you'll see canned water, yes. which is refreshing. I love it. And... Uh, I may or may not have sent my son to school with one of these to see what would happen because <laughs> I thought suspended. he's the coolest kid in the entire world. He came home covered in tattoos. Murder yeah. your thirst. Murder it. Yeah. Murder your thirst. And uh, what's cool is they also donate 10% of their profits uh, to kill plastic pollution, to just oh. murder it. Man, they're very aggressive. Uh, get free shipping on all water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash footballers. That's liquiddeath dot com slash footballers or you can grab some at whole foods sprouts and 7-eleven and we also want to thank bombas bombas mission is simple they make the most comfortable clothes ever and they match every item sold with an equal item donated so this holiday when you gift bombas to someone on your list you're also gifting someone in need it's a give give as we call it it's a, gi a give give yeah um, look, Bombas, I'm wearing their socks right now. We're playing pickleball a little bit later. I got their sports socks on. They design their socks, their shirts, their underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. They're not just another pair of socks. They, they, are, they are great socks. Thoughtful. They are soft. They are seamless. Everything is tagless. Everything they make has a luxuriously Who cozy doesn't need Christmas socks? feel. Are you, oh, are you kidding me? I mean, Christmas, the, the most common things you want are like socks, underwear, t-shirts, they Bombas has the best versions where they're thoughtful, the materials they're using are incredible, merino wool, pima cotton, even cashmere. 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 Would you like to wear cashmere? Bombas. I would. Cashmere. Uh, look, socks, underwear, t-shirts, they're the three most requested clothing items at homeless shelters as well in that order. That's why Bombas donates one for every single item you buy. Go to bombas.com slash footballers, get 20% off any purchase during their big holiday sale, that's Bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash footballers for 20% off. Bombas dot com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. A lot of people don't know this if you don't watch the show, but we uh, we, we get in a full cashmere bodysuit when we do Monday Punday. Mm, oh, yes. Because of the sophistication. Yes. Mm, mm, you. Mm. Yes. Mm. All right. Yesterday, we covered the Falcons, Cowboys, Saints, Titans, Jags, Colts, Browns, Patriots, Bills, Jets, and Lions, Steelers. Today, we've got seven matchups remaining, starting with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 6-2, and two, traveling to take on the Washington football team that are 2-6. and six. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buccaneers minus 9.5 points. The over-under is 51. Perfect transition here into the situation we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Chris Godwin. Seems questionable. This is a team that, you know, they've come out and said they're looking to, they're like the Cardinals. You know, they're going to consider the future of the season, not just this present week, when maintaining players like Rob Gronkowski, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown. So this could be a game that, you know, they lean on more Leonard Fournette than usual, right? They they We know they use him in the passing game. Jason just brought him up as maybe a end-of-season league winner type of player that doesn't, you know, that you need to trade for. He is a smash play this week against the 25th ranked Washington run deep. Yeah, he is incredibly interesting at the running back position. Mike Evans set up for another one of those, you know, huge spike Mike Evans weeks. And then the interesting, like, player who he might be just chilling out on your waiver wire right now, Tyler Johnson, who they drafted, I believe, last year in the fifth or so, but he came in, he's... He's, he's made, always looked solid. He's, yeah, he's he's made a couple spa, uh, splash plays, including a, a really big one on primetime last year, and he would be the next man up. And 
Tom Brady's great. Tom Brady makes the other players on the field better. So if Tyler Johnson is the wide receiver too, because Chris Godwin is inactive, then I I'm he's, willing to play him he's as a, a flex. Very, I think he's a very good play if he's the wide receiver too. The matchup is outstanding. Yeah, Marvin uh, Jones or Tyler Johnson. T Tyler Johnson Tyler. in the situation where Chris Godwin really? is not active. You look at the last two weeks; he's already been on the field sixty five percent of the time. Got six targets last week. If he or uh, I should say last the last game because he's they, the A B replacement. They're coming off of bye. Um, so I, I I think that he is a good start because at the end of the day, Tom Brady is going to get it done, right? I mean. Do do any of us think Tom Brady, because he doesn't have his perfect weapons, is going to have a bad game? It's really no. hard for me to believe that, and it's just a matter of well, who is going to get it? Is it Cameron Braid? Is it OJ Howard? Is it um, you know Mike Evans is going to feast? And I I think the answer is Tyler Johnson, and Jalen Darden could get involved as well. Could um, on the other side of uh, the football. Woof. Yeah, I mean. This is kind of a lost year for a team that we thought would be a lot better. Uh, they're two and six. Taylor Heineke has been having trouble. Antonio Gibson, three weeks inside the top 24 through the first nine. And he's still limited with the shin. You saw it in practice this week. Uh, I think Roto World talked about a competition between him and, and DeAndre Swift on who would keep their injury <laughs> on the you know practice reports all year long. But... There's plenty of reasons to have been concerned with Gibson before the bye, the involvement of Jarrett Patterson on an almost equal level, and then McKissick is obviously getting all the third down work. He's also getting the come-from-behind work, which is likely in this game. He's getting the two-minute work. It's it's not a – like, would you play Ramondre Stevenson if, if, if Harris was out, or would you play Antonio Gibson? I'd play Stevenson. But you would do it with that voice? Yeah, oh, 100%. The only player mm -hmm. from Washington mm -hmm. to me that is – I'm playing him. Like for sure, it's Terry McLaurin, and it not because it's a great matchup, but because Terry McLaurin is is at least healthyish, and he's a yeah. <laughs> at least healthyish. He's healthyish, and he's he's a he's an elite wide receiver. So I'm going to keep playing him. But Gibson, you, it's not that I'm like hate benching Antonio Gibson. It's it's a, ceiling. A, benching I may him, have found it? I may have another better option that I grabbed off of the waiver wire. Uh, this week or, or last week. Wow. Kenyon Drake. Man, what do we have? Have we heard anything on Josh Jacobs? Like, is he... I think he's good to go. He's Oh, he'll be he's, good to go, but is he at least... Is he running limited in practice? Or? <laughs> he, he, what I mean is he's not on the injury report. Oh. Yeah, then... I'd probably still go Gibson. I'd go Gibson then, yes. Uh, and McKissick is interesting because of... Uh, the Buccaneers are going to put up points and... That might force McKissick onto the field a bit more. We have him at the RB26 on the week. Um, I certainly like McKissick more than like a Kenyon Drake that we just brought up. Uh, and Ricky Seals Jones. Yeah, he's worth streaming. Like He's my my uh, my start of the week at the tight end position. But remember, um, for those, I have really been trying to find players I can stream. And so he's if you don't have someone who's locked in, Ricky is interesting. Carolina Panthers at 4-5 and five take on the 8-1 and one Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Cardinals minus 10.5. Now, it's interesting that that line has stayed that line, despite the quarterback controversy. Or, or, you know, last week we saw the line flip completely to San Francisco, all because of Colt McCoy. Uh, no such worries here, although the over under is only 44 points in this game. Ugh. Panthers have hit the under seven of nine times. Arizona's covered their spread in seven of nine. Uh, one thing that people reminded me when we brought up Cam Newton potentially taking over for the rest of the year was, you know, your first reaction is, well, he's going to steal some goal line. There was nobody stealing more goal line than Sam Darnold this year, right? <laughs> Sam Darnold was scoring <laughs> a <true>. ton <laughs> around, you know, from the quarterback position. So, well, and, and in 2018, when Cam Newton was awesome and could steal goal line with the best of them, that's that was when Christian McCaffrey was unbelievable with Cam Newton, and he had. A double-digit touchdown, so I, I'm not worried about that. Do you feel better about McCaffrey with Newton? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, I agree, and and you've got a you've got Christian McCaffrey back out there. Uh, played 49% of snaps last week. That should go up. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice to see that they actually eased him in. Uh, it wasn't what you wanted for fantasy if you started Christian McCaffrey last week, or at least it's not what you think you wanted. It is what you wanted because now. 
guess what? He's still there this week. <laughs> when you left the footcast yesterday, Mike and I had another spirited couple of debates, one of them around DJ Moore. Um, you know, we talked about how bad it's been, mm -hmm. PJ Walker, the Cam Newton future, but you weren't there, Jason. So I want to get your take on DJ Moore in general, how you view him in this game, the Cardinals defense at home. They've been one of the best in the league. Are you making strategic benching decisions with DJ Moore? Is he a lock? He's not a lock, no. I think he's a fine enough play. He's a talented player. He's, um, you know, his, his last few weeks that have been putrid, you've had eight points, ten points. Um, so I, I don't think he's um, someone that you have to bench. But he's also someone you, you don't have to play at this point. Not with a backup quarterback, not against a great defense. And I do think that this game ends up being a defensive game for both teams. Carolina is going to come in here and try to win it with their defense against a backup uh, quarterback. And Arizona is, I think, going to uh, really have to shut down Christian McCaffrey and, and that side. So it could be a 17, 14, I, 17, 12. Yeah. The 44 and a half points. I, I know that Arizona's covered at seven and nine, seven and nine games, but I think I would take the under here. This is a game I'm avoiding for the most part. Um, James Conner has been awesome. James Connors by himself, and he should probably be started. But I see him as an RB2 this week because Carolina's defense is good. Uh, I'm not in love with A.J. Green coming back without Kyler, even though you don't have Hopkins. There's really no one that I'm like, you have – Zach Ertz, sure, you could play him. The only player that like, you have to play without a shred of doubt is, is Christian McCaffrey because he's, he's Christian McCaffrey. Oh, James, James Connors is a lock for me. Yeah, I mean, as an RB2, he's, all RB2s are locks, yeah. I mean, he could end up on RB1 in yeah. this matchup. It will be very interesting to see how Arizona handles the running back position because, like, clearly they weren't prepared for uh, Chase Edmonds, their starter, to get hurt on his very first touch last week. So that happened, and it's the team. What do we do now? You go to James Conner. You go to the veteran who's ready to take over in those types of scenarios. But now Chase Edmonds is out with a high ankle sprain, he is going to miss multiple weeks. What does this, What does the timeshare with James Conner and Eno Benjamin really look like? Like Eno had a an absolute monster touchdown run where he just ran through a defender. looked He looked very competent. So I'm I'm interested to see does he get in for 25 percent of the snaps, 35 percent of the snaps. So he's a he is a player if if all of waivers happened and Eno Benjamin is still around I think he is absolutely worth a Sunday stash of just just see what happens it, not not that James Con like when James Conner has got a bunch of work James Conner gets hurt and they can't afford for James Conner to get hurt if you uh, want to have some fun look at the projection of James Conner since week three he is on uh, <clears throat> 24 touchdown pace <laughs> with uh, oh. he, he's not dropped the target this year and his involvement in the passing he's, game should go up. I mean, he's he's 10 for 10 on targets. And so I'm probably on the other side of the Eno Benjamin coin in terms of, you know, I mean, you can obviously stash anyone on your team, but I'm not that enthusiastic about him. Um, he's certainly going to spell Connor. And I think the game script and his success will determine his role where it's, you know, like we said yesterday, where it's could be up to 15 touches if he's having success. Or you could see him seven times, you know, in, in seven touches. Right. The, the way they were handling Chase and Connor, though, is it was – like Chase Edmonds was essentially a 60 to 65% snap player. And I don't – I can't imagine they're going to say, okay, James Connor, we need you in there 80% of the time. They so might, though. They, they could. I mean, yeah, they don't always – you don't but. always trickle – it's not always next man up on percentages of – of involvement in the offense, right? I mean, if a right. if a main guy goes down and then you have a former workhorse in James Conner, he may just be your workhorse. He, yes, absolutely could be. That's what I'm saying. I would stash him and find out. Minnesota Vikings, 3-5, and five, taking on the 5-3 and three Chargers. Chargers are three-point favorites on the DK Sportsbook. Over-under is 53 points. Uh, Justin Herbert bounced back, was the number one quarterback last week. These two teams have played in a lot of uh, nail biters this year. Seven of eight games for Minnesota have been one score games. That's insane. They're two and five in them, by the way. Uh, the Chargers are four and two. 
in their six of eight games that have been one score games. Uh, so it's been, I mean, this should be a competitive matchup, a three should point, be. three point spread in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, Justin Herbert got his mojo back. Like I said, Austin Eckler, you start him every week. Keenan Allen did return to a limited practice. He's in your lineup. The question is more like Mike Williams confidence, or is he somebody that you put in there because the, the upside was displayed to you early in the year and you just need it. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think both. I think because of what he did earlier, you you play him for that upside. But I also think this is a pretty good matchup. Um, the you know the, it's not uh, the Vikings defense is middle of the road. Their passing uh, defense and you know fantasy points given up against wide receiver is fine. I they don't have someone on their roster that I think can shut down. Mike Williams, the way that the last few weeks, Mike Williams has kind of really been going up against very, very difficult matchups. So I think Keenan Allen, Mike Williams are great. Um, Let me give you Mike Williams in this matchup, or it's right across the, the, the field, Adam Thielen against, which the Chargers secondary on the season, they are second against fantasy wide receivers in the past six weeks. They are fourth. Like yeah, they, the they are a real shutdown secondary. They are outstanding, and uh, that that for the matchup reason, I would take Mike Williams okay. over Adam Thielen. Um, Minnesota he, allowing the third highest deep pass rate <clears throat> success over expectation. Yeah, ironically, Mike Williams hasn't been taking too many deep, so maybe it's a Jalen Guyton day or something. Um, there's only been one week with both Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen in the top 30 at the same time. I would not imagine that this would be one of those weeks against that secondary um that's crazy yeah it, it hasn't been good now this is a smash play for Dalvin Cook yeah because the, the Chargers are a funnel defense they want you to run the ball they want you to have more success running the ball and lock down your passing game it's the way I would build a defense um it's but uh, the offense for the Vikings this is great this is what they want to do so I think there's going to be a lot of points in this game this is one where I, I think I want a lot of pieces yeah, no one's had more 15-plus yard runs this year, despite missing time, than Dalvin Cook. So he is still the same Dalvin Cook. I was going to ask you about the other Cook, which is Cook. because of the trifecta of the Parham burglar who steals some touches away from Jared Cook. Oh, yeah, he is. And, uh, you know, even Steven Anderson last week. Do you just – is it too unpredictable at the tight end position to start any of these guys? Yeah, you you got to bail out. Like, they're okay – streaming in a perfect matchup like last week they were up against a team that you know they give up points to the fantasy tight end uh, position the vikings in the past six weeks are number one so this is this i'm looking Stay elsewhere away. Yeah. yeah all right uh justin jefferson the, the team came out and said he deserved more targets last week than he received uh he is obviously always in your lineup along with cook but beyond that in this matchup are you looking at tyler conklin or yeah, yeah, sure. Conklin is a fine flex option. It's funny because Conklin never has a great game because he just doesn't really score that many touchdowns. Uh, but like every single week, I feel like you know you're playing Gasicki, who can get a goose or whatever. Tyler Conklin's going to get you eight, eight, nine points every week. So if you've got like a massive tight end problem and you're always swinging for the fences, might it just be better to throw in Tyler yeah. Conklin so you don't get a zero? Here's a crazy stat: the uh, on the year, Thielen and Jefferson are fourteen and fifteen at the position. Mm -hmm. Only one time thus far this year have both finished inside the top thirty on a given week. So it's been feast or famine for one or the other. Obviously, you're going to bet on Jefferson more often, but that's kind of unfortunate. You know, you've had other teams where they all do it every single week. The Philadelphia Eagles at three and six take on the five and four Denver Broncos. The DK Sportsbook line here: Broncos minus two and a half. The over-under is 45.5 points. What are the storylines from this game that you're paying attention to? Obviously, the Broncos impressed last week on defense, had a game plan, executed it, destroyed the Cowboys. Uh, steady Teddy at quarterback. He is not going to be somebody that brings you back from a three-score deficit, but he can certainly play with a lead, and he can execute the offense. Um, how are you guys feeling? So my question here for the Denver Broncos, it's not like – both of the running backs, they're going to have even work, even fantasy points at the Melvante. end of the day. Melvante. Yes, Melvante. Uh, so I'm I'm fine playing both of those guys. Jerry Judy, to me, is in. I'm playing him as a wide receiver, too. I mean, he is – It's we're still small sample here for Jerry Judy, but he at least – he looks like the preferred target 
for Teddy Bridgewater. You know, the seven in week one, eight targets this past week on just 60% of the snaps. I we Fireball is the one. Tim Patrick, Fireball Jones, is the one who came through with the big game last week. So I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm chasing those points or not. But the question is, Cortland Sutton, what do we do here? Because he's a good player. But when Jerry Judy has been on the field with him, he has been a terrible fantasy option. Not just a, like, oh, he didn't meet expectations. No, he has been killing your team. I I have a thought on this. The team, I believe, looks at Jerry Judy based on just the comments from their staff. A lot of the way that Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers view D.L. Samuel. And so one of the reasons you see issues with Sutton is because they do, it's not just Teddy fades back and makes a decision. It's this play in the huddle is going to Jerry Judy. We're manufacturing a touch behind the line of scrimmage. We're manufacturing a touch on this play in this space. You know, they've said they're going to come out and do that consistently with Jerry Judy. And so with a team that runs the ball this much and has so much success and then designs some of their game plan around Judy, you're looking at the scraps at times for Cortland Sutton. And so it does concern me moving forward with Judy and with what the coaching staff has said. In Jason, the, do you have any thoughts on that? Just a real quick stat to highlight. In the three games where they both have been on the field, Cortland Sutton has totaled nine targets in three games. Jerry Judy had eight last week. Like, the disparity has been massive. Yeah, I, I think that there that the truth is in, in between those scary stats, um, and, and, it, and it is mirroring what um, Andy said. The manufactured touches, the touches that are sure are Jerry Judy. Um, there are still other targets here. And and the first part of your stat is really important there, Mike. How many games? Three. Three games. There's mm -hmm. a three-game sample here. And one of those games, were they up 30 to nothing? Like, yeah. So they didn't need to throw the ball around. So I, I don't want to overreact to that. To me, I'm confident to play Jerry Judy. I'm happy to play Jerry Judy. With Fireball Jones and Cortland Sutton, I would prefer to bench them. Um, I would prefer to take a wait and see. Are I, they like a same tier for you? or Right now, they're they're very similar. If I had to start one or the other, I'd start Cortland Sutton for talent. Okay. Um, but um, I, I, I'm not moving on from Cortland Sutton, but I want to take a wait and see approach, see when they're in a game, which I think they'll be in this week, where they're not just completely blowing out their opponent or – um, you know, th there's a little bit more working in of, of both parties. But, yeah, Jerry Judy is the one you could be confident in. And in this game specifically, I, I always hate recommending Noah Fant, but I, the, ma but the was, matchup is there. I man. was going to ask it. The, the, for, for fantasy, you know, when, when you've got – Fantasy? F oh, fantasy. <laughs> um, when you've got one of these teams that just is horrifically, horrifically bad at guarding the tight end um, – it happens almost every week. Uh, I, I, out of curiosity, I wanted to look and see Tim Patrick versus Cortland Sutton. Patrick is catching 72% of his passes. Sutton is at 64%. Despite the fact Patrick is an average yards per catch of 15, Sutton at 14.3. So Wow, that's I just I am bringing it up because I don't yeah. I don't know if he liked the, the comment about talent. I don't know if he liked that. I think yeah. maybe Tim Patrick is Tim Patrick in your head, and maybe he's you know, not fireball in your head. He doesn't have a cool name like Cortland Sutton. That's a cool name. Mm -hmm. I it's think, unique. I think when yeah. you say fireball out loud, you're still saying Tim Patrick in your head. Yeah. You're you haven't right. embraced yeah. it. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, I just know the truth. <laughs> Jalen I just know Hurts. his name is Tim, Tim Patrick. <laughs> Jalen Hurts uh, at quarterback. Jordan Howard. Are we starting Jordan Howard? This, yes. I, He's I'm, getting started against me in some leagues. Yes, I am willing to – like a, a fantastic question. Jordan Howard or Antonio Gibson? Oh golly! And I think it's Jordan. Howard. Oh, Mike! I think it I is. I think it's Jordan. Mike, Howard. you need to see your priest. <laughs> he, Call Jordan, the exorcist. Jordan Howard had the highest percentage of snaps of any running back in Week Nine. The highest percentage of touch per snaps. Touch per snaps. Yeah, sorry, it saw a touch on seventy-four yeah. percent of his snaps. When he's on the field, he's getting the ball. And it's this is one of the big questions for this game is. The Eagles have had tremendous success the last two weeks running the ball. Granted, they played against the Detroit Lions and the Los Angeles Chargers, two teams that you can run the ball on. So is that will that elixir be intoxicating for the Philadelphia Eagles and they think, well, this is our this is who we are now. 
and we can run the ball. So, but I do think that Jordan Howard is an okay play here, and yeah, I probably would start him over Tony Gibson, and that that hurts me. Devontae Smith last week, five for one sixteen and one. Um, he still is not getting a ton of work. Are you starting him over any of the? Are you starting him over Judy? No. Not over Judy. No. no. Okay. The other two. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. The Seahawks at three and five take on the seven and two Packers. The Packers are three point home favorites. DraftKings Sportsbook line has the game at, uh, with a forty nine point over under, and Russ is going to come back in this one, which is great news for DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Metcalf managed to survive. He survived he did. the absence of his quarterback, and we are in the dark on Chris Carson and Alex Collins right now in terms of who's going to play. Mm -hmm. So tempered expectations, even if Carson returns. Yeah, certainly. I don't. I don't think they're going to return and just give him twenty five carries. But you're not going to be able to play Alex Collins if Chris Carson is active. Whereas I do think if Chris Carson is active, I would I would start him. So it's really a matter of I'm starting whoever the starting running back is for the Seattle Seahawks. Hopefully you have them both. If you have one of them, I hope it's your guy. Aaron Rodgers, uh, Coach uh, Matt Lafleur does say he's on track to start. Provided all of the health checks uh, come in positive, where you know he's got to check the heart and all the post-COVID stuff, mm -hmm. um, but we're expecting him to be back, which means good things for Devonte Adams, Aaron Jones, and his new running mate Odell Beckham. Ju oh, oh. Mm. Mm. so close! Second place. Aaron Jones uh, is in your lineup. AJ Dillon still keeping an eye on him in terms of utilization. I mentioned he's getting like ten touches a game. A little bit more than what Jamal was getting. A little bit less in the passing game than Jamal, I think. Gibson or Dylan? Gibson. Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, other decisions to be made in this one, I don't see them. Um, other decisions would be to go to the next game. <laughs> uh, I've made that decision. So does that mean you're playing Lockett? Uh, that does mean I'm playing Lockett. I mean, I'm playing him. I'm, that was more for I'm, Andy. I'm, oh, good, good question. Yeah, I mean, I'm I not take his silence. I take his silence a as, yes. a, as an exception. That's a yes. Sure. I mean, I never tell anybody when I do that, though. That's a private. <laughs> that's a private decision. <laughs> Confidentiality. <laughs> oh boy, Kansas City Chiefs at five and four take on the Las Vegas Raiders at five and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Chiefs minus two and a half. The over under is fifty two points. This one is really interesting. Um, you know, the, the Raiders are at home. They're also ahead of them in the division. I think it'll be a competitive game here. You know, I don't expect the Chiefs offense to break out of its funk this week. You don't expect the no. Chiefs offense to break out of its funk? No, I do not. Wow. I, I do not expect them. These divisional games between these two teams are always hyper competitive. The yes. Raiders, I believe, won both of them last no, year. No, the road team won both last year. Oh, okay. But so they split them. They won forty to thirty two, the Raiders did, and then the Chiefs won thirty five to thirty one. Just points bonanza. And that is my hope. That is everyone's hope, right? Is just for an outstanding offensive outpouring here. Um the Raiders have a better defense than they did last year. Uh, so that might be the one thing that maybe They're gets in the way against of, fantasy quarterbacks first against wide receivers. Right. That that's something that might get in the way of the um, getting rid of the funk that the uh, Kansas City Chiefs have been in. But I, you know, it's just hard for me to. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna believe they get out of the funk every single week. Every single week, I'm just gonna believe in Patrick Mahomes, believe in Andy Reid. They're getting uh, Clyde edwards alaire back. That I wanted to bring that up because uh, Andy and I were talking about this on the Footcast, Jay. That as little I like, I running backs are replaceable. The next man up can usually provide you just as much, or not just, but close to the starter, and the offense can usually keep going. The Kansas City Chiefs, like the the huge drop off with Patrick Mahomes and the passing offense, there is a there is a complete overlap of when Clyde Edwards. His last full game was week four, and that was the last time that we saw, you know, that was the end of the run where Mahomes started the, the, the season on fire. Clyde Edwards gets hurt. Edwards and Larry gets hurt, and then they enter into the funk. Is there a chance 
that Clyde is actually more important to this team than it feels like because he's not an important fantasy football player. I, I, I think it is, for the most part, a coincidence. Um, I don't think he is the reason for the collapse. I think it's defense is doing different things, but you have- I believe that Clyde Edwards-Alaire is their clear-cut best runner. I think Daryl Williams is fine. He looks good on a play or two. But those two games that he, you know, his f- full two games before he went out to injury, he was over 100 rushing yards in both I mean. those games. That matters to There's an no offense. doubt that Clyde's role is more secure now with the lack of success by Williams and Gore and McKinnon than it was before. Yes. And so I would I would start Clyde. I think he's going to play this week. I would, would you s- trade for him? Sure, absolutely. You're you're not trading high for Clyde because if you trade for him today, there's not a guarantee he plays this week. The fantasy manager might just want something for him and think he he's not going to get anything. Um, so I would I would trade for Clyde Edwards-Alaire. The uh, all this debate on whether the offense gets it going doesn't really affect whether you're playing Mahomes, Tyreek, and Kelsey. They're always going to be in your lineup. So in some ways, it doesn't matter. It's just. You know, just be good. They're in there, and, and, <laughs> and you better hope that this is one of those barn burners like they had last year. Derek Carr, he is streamable. Yes, he is. And Josh Jacobs looks healthy. Kenyon Drake, we'll see if it's four weeks in a row for Kenyon Drake. But the only really reliable pass catcher is going to be Darren Waller, and then you can take your shot in PPR on Hunter Renfro, who was banged up a little bit but looks like he'll be back in there. Freaking Brian Edwards, right? man. Yeah, he, he doesn't – Brian Edwards is not the style of, of player that Carr is targeting. That's for sure. That is for sure. Well, I'm just saying, like, Darren Waller separates. Uh, Hunter Renfro separates. Like, Brian Edwards is a 50-50 ball player, and I guess at this point of his career, Carr doesn't want to play that way. He wants to throw to the open wide receivers? Weird. <laughs> well, I'll just say, like... I think Mike's right. I think that if Brian Edwards has some of those elite skills that exist in 50-50 balls... We're never going to see it with Clyde. I am. It's like Devontae Parker. He was a complete and total bust until he got a quarterback who's like, oh, I th- no, that's the type of, pl- of player I'll throw at. Sure, but I'm mad at him. Oh, that's fair. That's because fair. I got a goose. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there, there's this is not all car. I mean, Brian Edwards is it's, it's also Brian Edwards. Uh, Los Angeles, the Rams on Monday Night Football with Odell Beckham Jr. at 7-2, and two, take on the 3-5 and five and tumbling down the hill, San Francisco 49ers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Rams minus 3.5. The over-under is 49. To me, that's a lot of respect given San Francisco at home in this one with the Rams, I guess, you know, coming off the loss, having some bumbling games. Maybe that's why. But, I mean, are you surprised at that line, yes. first of all? Yes. I am surprised at that line. Divisional you, game. Yeah, divisional game. And, and like you said, um, at home the problem is they they i mean when's the last time they won at home it certainly wasn't this year i mean they've they've been awful at home home is like not where the the 49ers want to be not where the heart is not where their heart is uh so let's start the Rams side i mean stafford you play him daryl henderson of course Mm -hmm. cooper cup never leaves your lineup but now do you do you start to have flex questions with robert woods not not this week. Even with Beckham getting some chances this week. Yeah, still not this week. Yeah, again, I'm not going to change my Robert Woods or my Cooper Cup until my hand is forced because Van Jefferson's been out there for 90% of snaps, and I don't think uh, they're – my my big worry here is actually more towards Daryl Henderson. I worry that – are they going to get too pass happy as a team? Think we can always pass. We've got these three guys. My, you know, Your third corner can never be as good as our third wide receiver – and so every play becomes a pass, and they get they abandon the run. That I don't think that's going to happen, but that is my worry. Um, but until I mean, you're not abandoning Cooper Cup because of Odell Beckham. If you want to say, I did not suggest such things. No, no, no. I'm I'm just saying to the listener if they are questioning if things are going to collapse, they're not. Um, Robert Woods is, you know, maybe a little bit more iffy because he hasn't been the target monster. Decisions to be made on the other side of the ball. Elijah Mitchell, play him. Uh, it's gonna be, could be, could be tough against yeah. the Rams ceiling wise. But he's the guy. And yeah. Jamichael Hasty banged up. Like Jeff Wilson, is he ready to go? Don't know. But Elijah Mitchell is. Brandon Ayuk after six for eighty nine and a touchdown last week. Uh, they were playing from behind the whole game. Probably doing it again. But 
Do we know if Von Miller is ready yet? I would think so. Yeah, I'd hope you trade trade a couple of picks, but yeah. uh, obviously was not ready last week. I'll 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 see if I can find something. Ayuk or Marvin Jones against Indianapolis. I would play. Oof. I'm Marvin on that side. What do you guys think? I'm I'd, Marvin. I'm going Ayuk. Ayuk or Sutton against Philly. Ayuk. Ayuk. Okay, Debo's in your lineup, obviously. Yes. Kittle. Nice to see the bounce back. The world's better when George Kittle is it a part is. of it. Yeah. Uh, what do we have updates wise, Brooksy? We have. Nothing too exciting. Nothing too exciting. Corey Davis and Tevin Coleman are going to play. Okay. Well, that the that does make a difference. Like Jamison Crowder was one of those. If he's alone again with Mike White, I you can maybe take the deep shot on his, on the targets being there. And Tevin Coleman, what is what does the coaching staff do? do well, they, he, he do was they, a healthy scratch in the game, wasn't he? No, he's been banked up. He mm. and. Does the coaching staff keep rolling with the rookie, or do they decide they want the veteran back in there? It's just it it creates at least some question marks. I Which would is still... great. You need question marks in this game so that you can confidently bench every single jet in the entire game <laughs> yeah. against the number one defense by far in football in Buffalo. Don't play any of them, including Michael Carter, if Tevin Coleman's out there, and then you're done. Yeah, other than Mike White, who is an auto lock. Yo, yeah, I mean, he's number one on the week. Obviously, right. he said he'd be, he 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 should be drafted number one according did, to him. He did say that. So and the way he's played, I don't know that you can argue. Love with Love that him. confidence, young man. <laughs> oh, Love gosh. it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the start sit tool. If you need it, it's on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You guys ready? Yeah. Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings. Well, I uh, we've got a unique situation today because I, I lost this like three weeks ago. They said it couldn't be done. And then Mike lost this past week. And so I wasn't here for a week. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I thought maybe you'd forget about it, but you didn't. Never. So we're spinning the wheel twice today before we reveal our week 10 lineups. Last week was insane. So like, if, if you've ever played DFS on, on DraftKings, you know, they give you a nice little... Uh, just a, a, an icon letting you know oh, how your player's doing it's when a fire what, they give the fire or they give the ice and i in the chaos of week nine i managed i had lamar so it was great but then the rest of my entire lineup were all ice players that is not how you win a tournament it's also yeah. how you get the wheel of shame Ugh. so uh why don't we have uh, i'll spin it first since i was the we well, uh, got to announce it I'm, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I got I, my finger on the button, Mike. I'm, I'm sorry. Calm down. I'm going to spin it first, and then Mike will spin it after me. Wheel of Shame. All right. So I'll, I'll go ahead and spin it and see where I end up. Oh, boy, it's spinning. So what am I going to look mullet, like today? I mean, my ha you could just say ranger. take your hair off, uh, your hat off. <laughs> and I, the, the, I'm... Benjamin Franklin. The winner is Ben Franklin. Ben, ben Franklin? <laughs> it's all about them Benjamins. <laughs> Joke's on you. That's Wheel of Awesome. Um, Mike, you go ahead and spin the wheel as uh, well, and we'll figure out your right, fate. Mr. Franklin. I'm I'll, happy. You, uh, we'll but I haven't, put on, I haven't put on yeah. the, the all garments. All right, spin that wheel. All right. We got Fedora. We got a Jester cap. We got a Farmer. We got... Fake pig man, pig man. <laughs> oh, Mike's pig man. What is Fantastic. a what is a pig man? I guess we're about to find out now. Is this where I spin now? Because we're ah uh, no, you. Oh, you didn't I have didn't to. lose. It's been a little while. Yeah, yeah, you finally get a week off. Finally, i i I'm, I won both these. Um, okay, all right. So Andy has been Andy handed his glasses. A wonderful. Oh, I love the glasses. <laughs> Very <laughs> Harry Potter. And the Ben, the Ben Franklin. Is the Ben Franklin uh, uh, cap, Climb so it should be... You see it, right? You would imagine. <laughs> oh, fantastic. He's got the bald front and the big hair. All right. Ben Franklin All ready right. to do some work what over is, here. And, and we got... Uh, I, now, I can get back to hosting now. Yeah. Big man. So wait, what do I do with the tail? Uh, The tail is... <laughs> I guess for nothing. You just right. have little Whatever. cute. So I got little little pig, pig ears. ears. I look like Trent Krim, the Independent. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Oh man, what a good Ted Lasso reference. Uh, you do look like 
And Mike, Mike is much more what humiliating. It, this is for a child. Yeah, it's a little kid's. Can pig. we? You can't get a bigger size. I mean, pig, no. Why would I do that? Do you remember the pig man from Seinfeld, Brooksy? Oh, oh yeah, gosh. that episode. I am eating some of this hair. I've got the <laughs> wheel. I've got the wheel of shame of no beard. Why don't you share your uh, quarterback for this week ten matchup there, Jason? Yeah, yeah. winner. Right. Or I guess I have mine up oink, as well. Oink. Um, I'm I'm starting off. What with is that last item that you're supposed to it's wear? A it's tail. a tail. Oh, so he's got to clip it on. No, you stand up, Mike. Put on the tail. <laughs> um, while he puts his tail on, I will announce my quarterback for this week. I'm going this. with Tom Brady. Um, I know he is down some weapons, but the matchup against the Washington football team off the bye. I just think Tom Brady's going to get it done. He's safe. This is a cash style play. He's 7600. That's my quarterback. All right. Well, I. <laughs> <laughs> You got some hair in your face. I don't face. think Ben Franklin had this much in his mouth. Um, here's the deal. I like nothing more than... You look way smarter. Thank you. If anything. I don't think that's true. I like nothing more than playing a player that Jason has played and failed with and then oh. playing them and succeeding with them. Yes. You're uh, going Josh Allen? C. Bryant, I am going Josh Allen. Buffalo takes on the Jets, 7,900. I'm going to go with Josh Allen. Mike, who do you got? Uh, well, do we have three different quarterbacks? We have three different quarterbacks. First off, I have, I'm definitely getting some type of, uh, disease from the, the scent of this nose that I'm currently wearing. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, so, pig man. Give yeah. us your quarterback. Come call, on, pig face. Call poison control. Uh, oh, no. I am, I'm playing Carson Wentz against the Wait, time out. Did, did you, you just, just honk? did you just give a honk honk at, at, for, the pig? for the pig i think pigs honk have a honk little piggy <laughs> <laughs> honk honk pig face i mean there's a clear I, cut, there's classic a noise there's the pigs a different make. noise right yeah they go Dude, oink I, my face is losing circulation <laughs> all right uh, uh but it's carson wentz against the jacks you're going Jack wentz Walker. i had I carson wentz on my original 5, lineup 900 and i was I was too afraid, so I went up to Tom Brady. Give us your two quarterbacks for this week. I won't. I'll give my backs. two running backs. Um, my <laughs> running backs this week are Jonathan <laughs> Taylor and Ezekiel Elliott. That's Whoa. where I'm spinning up. I want them stud running backs. Can you guess the price? Oh, uh, Jonathan Taylor is 8100 so he is uh, premium. And Ezekiel Elliott was only 7000 I think that's a, a decent deal on him. I went with Dalvin Cook at 8000 so I went premium on Dalvin Cook against the Chargers, that run funnel defense. But I also went with Dearness Johnson at 4,700. I have Jonathan Taylor and Zeke. Oh, Whoa. Well done. I like them. That's going to be a problem for me if they do well. Uh, Jason, who do you have at your three wide receiver positions? Uh, my three wide receivers, I have uh, Deontay Johnson, full PPR. He's 6,800. I think he's going to have about 2,500 targets. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Amari Cooper is sitting still at 6,200. I don't know why DraftKings hates Amari Cooper, but the value is too good to not take him. And then my third wide receiver, this is where I'm really saving the money. I'm going Tyler Johnson stacking with Tom oh, Brady. So if okay. Tyler Johnson gooses, I will maybe wear a goose <laughs> costume. Uh, you won't be honking? Oh, that'd be nice. I'll uh, be oinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are wide receivers. I'm going to go with Stephon Diggs at 7,500, stacking with Josh Allen against the Jets. 6,800, which is what you're paying for Deontay. I'm going to pay that for DK Metcalf uh, against Green Bay with the return of Russell Wilson. And then I am saving here. I'm going Deontay Harris. Uh, oh, my gosh. Did you do it too? So I have uh, – my big boy is Mike Evans at 6,900 with the possibility that he is the true alpha sure. remaining. Then I have DK Metcalf and Deontay Harris. Wow. Ooh, we got some crossover. All right, tight end, flex, and defense, Jason. Oh, we're having overlap here. Tight sure. end, yeah, tight end is Dan Arnold. It's uh, Dan Arnold. I've got Dan Arnold. Yeah, I mean, the post <laughs> – look, Dan Arnold's the clear smash play. He's 3,500. It's against Indianapolis. Um, at, well, let's go defense here one, one at a time. I've got the Titans. Titans. Uh, Titans. Okay, there is a massive overlap here. Um, and at flex, I have a flow chart. I have one. Oh, of, uh, cheater. Uh, not a cheater. I have one of two running backs here. They are the exact same price. It's either Devin Singletary at 4700 or Dearness Johnson at 4700 Here's my rule. If both Nick Chubb and Zach Moss are out, I will stick with uh, Devin Singletary. If either one and the other is not, then... Um, oh, so I get a pivot off of Dearness then if I want to? Well, you didn't bring that up. This was my idea No, I just the thought we were going to play. I sure, thought we were going to sure play out can. on the up and sure up, can. but whatever. Uh, I've got Javante Williams for 5,000 as my flex. 
I have Dearness Johnson in my flex, and my flow chart, which I was going to bring up, is actually would be Russ Gage. Okay. Well, I will if if Nick Chubb starts, I will pivot off of Dearness. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is that is <sighs> insanity. It yeah. just means that uh, we are confident in a lot of these players. They've got good values. Brooks has shared the image. Hunk! He's shared the image of the scientists from Independence Day with me. Oh yes. And I also resemble that as Data. well. This is the worst Ben Franklin costume that has it, ever been if made. You, if disagree. you could never, it, you if could you, never tell that public, it's Ben Franklin. If I walked in public, uh, Ben Franklin had a further, his hair went back Ben further. Franklin barely had hair. This is the biggest wig I've ever seen in my life. This is Ben Franklin, the rock star. You do look. Uh, this uh, is not Ben. It's a little Mozarty. Sure. I mean, this is everything but. The only thing know. Ben Franklin is the glasses. It. Oh, I'm loving it I'm as loving well. It. You're, you, How you feeling, pig man? Like my face is about to split in half? That was a kid's... Uh, <laughs> his head just pops if, off. If you look at this the, strap... The, the wire right above the eyes. Oh, oh it is man, making a mark. That like, thing is brutal. All in for the bit, man. Wow. That is very tiny. <laughs> all right. A reminder, download the DraftKings app now and use the code BALLERS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings. The official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, a minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. <laughs> I just realized um, that that thing's made for a normal size head. And so that's, yeah. that's the problem. No, oh, yeah. They, Mike's got a bit a bit of a different uh, size. I, I, have a, I have a big cranium. Put your nose back on, pig man. Wow. Honk away. Come on, man bear pig. Man bear pig. <laughs> Are you going to do uh, Sunday Live in that thing? If I survive. All right. That is it for the fantasy footballers. Jason, we're going to get him spinning the wheel next week. Probably Bye-bye. Not. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.